start the YouTube. And we can start the meeting anytime you like. You know. Kevin, is that is my sound better? It's a little muffled. It's a little I, muffled. I, I hear you loud and clear. So Katie. do I. Okay. Katie? You're okay. You're not loud, but you're not quiet either. Yeah. Never was. <laughs> then you're okay. Uh, okay, we'll call this meeting to order. Inland Wetlands and Watercourse Commission, June 21st, 2021. It is 7.07 p.m. Uh, present uh, is Kevin Wilcox, Katie Flint, uh, Peter Castelli, yeah. Kevin, uh, Kevin Hussain, Barry Burson, and Jose Geiner. At least for now. I'll be <laughs> and recording sec secretary Joyce. What's Joyce's last name? Pickett. Pickett. Okay. Um, any old business, Peter? None. New business, wetlands permit application for two brothers, Otto, LLC. What's the story on that? Uh, this is a, an application for uh, a uh, commercial, industrial. Well, it's a commercial development on the corner of Peters Road and Highland Park. They submitted an application uh, for a wetlands permit with uh, no impacts based on the official map. I went out and I looked and I think there's more wetlands uh, than, than our map shows and in a different location. Um, so they had the wetlands flag and I'm recommending that they come back with a map amendment application. Uh, and if they uh, get me the information, I would, I would be happy or I would be okay with scheduling them for the next meeting, July 19th, probably for two public hearings, one for the map amendment which is mandatory and the other for uh, the permit application, especially if they have some reg some direct impacts. And I think they might. Okay. All right, so that, is that table or, or is it incomplete? No, at, at this point, it's it's uh, time to, to agree uh, if you guys are okay with it for me to tentatively schedule the public hearings for yep. the next the next meeting. Okay, so we're just going to schedule a public hearing. We don't have to act on this now, then. No, we don't. And, and there's no, there's no tabling. There's no extension. It's just okay. scheduling for the public hearing. And in fact, that's exactly what we're going to do for, for two and three as well. Um, but there's a caveat on those two. All right, let's um, take care of one. Okay, so we're going to schedule one for public hearing on our next meeting which is june july 19th july 19th yep that's and there will the the permit application will be a public hearing as will the map amendment okay so it'll be two all right yep. and item number two wet, wetlands uh, boundary amendment that we have to schedule for public hearing also yes uh in that case um uh this um this one was, um, or has a long history. Right. Wetlands were flagged in late 2019 and they submitted an application for a map amendment in early 2020. They did not complete it. They did not give us uh, proper information, et cetera. Um, and so uh, they also didn't pay a $3,200 fee for the permit application so that the permits languished until we had to issue a notice of violation uh, for regulated activities. The town attorney uh, took it to court and there is some kind of judgment. I don't know exactly what that is, but part of it was to, uh, and part of this commission's requirements were for him to pay the fees, submit applications and, and get permits for his ongoing operation. That's what this is all about. And in fact, the, uh, um, two Fridays ago, or maybe just, I think it was two Fridays ago. Um, I went out to the site and walked the site with the property owner, with the applicant, Mr. 
Andy Morrison. And we looked for the flags that were, the wetland flags that were placed uh, in late 2019. And we found some of them, but it was clear that in, in other cases, they'd been either taken out or, or eaten by the deer or the bears, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> but a lot of them were missing. And the property is shaped like a, a C, a backward C. And the house on this C-shaped lot is number 1236. The house on the lot that it surrounds on three sides is number uh, 1240. And I think that he's encroached into the wetlands at the rear of the lot at, one, at 140. Um, so, I have asked him and he's agreed to have the surveyor restate the fl wetland flags that were originally uh, placed in 2019, the ones that, ones that are missing. You don't have to restate the ones that are there. Um, but I think what, it's, what we're gonna find is that, they're, that he's created a, a, uh, uh, an access road from the north part of the sea to the south part of the sea. Uh, and he's got, uh, I think he's encroached into the wetlands um, back there. Uh, and so, but I won't know for sure until we get the wetland flags you know, replaced. Um, so if that happens in time for me to review it in the field and get a, get a, uh, uh, um, get a public hearing scheduled, uh, ad properly advertised and scheduled, then we could do that one on the 19th of July as well, or those two. Um, but I'm, I'm fairly confident we'll have a map and the information that we need for a map amendment and a permit um, at 15 Highland Park Drive, number one. I'm not so sure that we'll have the information we need for 1236 Blue Hills Avenue in time. I heard you guys when I came in talking about going back to the in-person meetings and, and having to advertise and uh, the advertising uh, time has stretched out now if we're gonna go back, right? Jose, we've got to get the uh, notice of public hearings to the newspaper, I believe two Tuesdays before the meeting or something like that. Jose, you're you're muted. <coughs> Sorry about that. You can do it up to 10. It's between 15 and 10 days before the hearing. The first notice has to be in. Okay. And, and, and again, the, the, the Hartford current is even slower than it used to be. So you got to get it. You, you can't rely on them to do it at the last minute. You got you to gotta give them at least two or three days ahead of time. Um, right. And depending on, if, especially if you, if you want to avoid the big charge. There's only some days that they have the local uh, ads in. Otherwise, right, it right. goes into a state and they charge you a ton for them. So uh, you have to work it out, uh, figure it out. But it's fit between 15 and 10 days, the first notice. And then the second notice would come anywhere after that, as long as there's two days. Uh, Before the meeting. Yeah. Or two days between notices and, oh, oh, and, oh, okay. and, and also two days before the meeting. So, so. There, there's really, you know, uh, this one is dependent on, I think, getting those wetland flags restaked. Uh, and I keep saying restaked because I don't want the soil scientists to go out there and set new flags. I want to see where the original ones were. So I'm assuming that the surveyor has the coordinates for those stakes and he can go and put them back out there. So why don't we why don't we table two and three until he's all set? Yeah, again, we, we don't need to table it because it's uh, it we're setting okay. potentially setting the public hearings. Yeah, you haven't advertised it, so it's not technically on the table. Well, they have the application before us, and yeah. the clock is ticking. But right. I I would rather table it and spend the money for advertising. So the guy has all his ducks in order. All right. Yeah. Um, as I recall, the Wetlands Commission has 65 days to schedule a public hearing after the application is received. And today is the first day it was received, right? Today's the actual start date? Yes. So you got 65 days from today. 
to, to, to schedule a public hearing. So, in, Alan, if we table it now, this clock starts. Okay. So. I mean, I don't want to spend a lot of money on this guy because he's still got a lot of work to do. Oh, yes. So and that's why I, I think scheduling public hearings for these two applications has to be predicated on getting those wetland yeah. flags. Otherwise, it's an incomplete field. application. Yeah. And then the clock doesn't matter. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it, 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 this has been a difficult uh, applicant uh, and application, and we're going to try my hardest to work with him to get the permits that he needs. May not be the permits that he wants, but permits that he needs. Yeah. All right. So, is there a motion to table items two and three to the next? Alan, Alan I don't think we should table them because we, we haven't can... we haven't actually opened them. Right. So, we just accepted the. Just, okay. just noted it for official data receipt is tonight, and that's it. So now you got 65 days to schedule a hearing. So we and, and, and yeah, so right. the last, you know, it had to go in the paper by July 6th. So Peter, the week before, would have to know whether or not it's ready for a public hearing. Right. And he, and he could choose not to, not, not to schedule it if it's not ready. I have two questions. On page three of your memo, Peter, the last paragraph says that the applicant is warned not to perform any regulated activities on the site until such time as the permit is approved. So does, the, does that apply now? And are you confident that this applicant understands that? No, I'm not confident <laughs> that he understands that. Um, and that's that's part of the problem. It was discussed in the field that there should be no further clearing, no further placement of material, no material extra, you know, no more loads of material brought in. He's got tons and tons of uh, large trees that he's cutting up into firewood. I mean, a whole lot of them, mm -hmm. uh, more than you can see from the road. And the, uh, from the site. and his his um, uh, you know his uh, operation is inherently messy because it's you know tree cutting he's splitting cutting down trees bringing them there uh, he's even buried a bunch of trees up by the street and these are pretty pretty substantial trees and they're dead the trees are dead because he buried the trunks and he he said that he did that as a planned thing that was his plan so what purpose so that he doesn't have to deal with the leaves you know so that the, the wood is now it's no longer green it's <laughs> it's dead wood i he's yeah, I he, brought it at my old house yeah <laughs> here you go harvest <laughs> he's harvesting the trees is what he's doing so without without a uh, without a uh, plan to do so correct yeah, correct. Or uh, yeah, and the, the, the plans that we have from 2020 uh, show most of the operation or all of the tree clearing operation on the northerly part of the C-shaped lot. And it's presently on the southerly part. So it'll be a, you know, a major, major change. He's doing a zone change and a subdivision plan. And I believe he plans to use the house at 1240, I'm sorry, 1236 as uh, a residence and it'll be in the residential zone and the tree harvesting and, and processing will be on the northerly part uh, in, the, in the industrial zone when the zone gets changed. Jose, do you remember, is he changing a zone from residential to industrial? It's just a little triangle. Don't recall that's about it. Although I saw, something tells me, yeah, yeah. He 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 has submitted applications. For yeah, that. yeah. I think it's yeah because he's he's adjusting that line. Part of it, I think, is already industrial too. I think he's yeah, just yeah. trying to adjust the line so it it, it, it uh, encompasses the the areas he wants to to work in. Yeah, and he he did file new application and paid the fees for a subdivision, a zone change, and a special permit site plan approval from TPNZ. 
You did and actually, that in- now that I think about it, the front where you're coming, coming out is probably zoned residential. And he needs to get that zoned industrial to, to be able yeah, to put the drive, driveway. To have yeah. his driveway. So I think the front portions, uh, where, you know, where it was anticipated it would be houses and there's other houses there are all zoned residential. I think he's rezoning the part north of uh, where the house is uh, to industrial so he, he can have his yeah. driveway that's in the industrial report. in the industrial zone. So that's that's what's happening. Okay. So is it a moot is it a moot point <clears throat> for him to get a wetlands permit if he is unable to get it changed to industrial? They're they're separate. There's uh, it has it has to be the wetlands first. Uh, yeah, if he is. gets his wetlands permit, then the planning can can vote on it or can address it. But I'm not sure if there if that would be a if that would be a killer. Well, you know, I'm, well, well, if you got if you guys that had the wetland permit, uh, you know, I guess you could still co- go forward with the zone change, but obviously you can't go forward with the activities legally anyway. Um, yeah, and and I think he does. And Peter's right; you do need to go through wetlands first. So there's plenty of cases where wetlands may approve it, but then PNC may not. Yeah, so I, and we can't approve it at TPC unless wetlands approves. Right, it, it's the, the wetlands is, is the required first step. So that's the one. Has this guy be been before us before pleading poverty? No, he was in before us, and they never followed through. He never submitted. His fees and, and yeah, so, like a year and a half ago. He yeah, was, we denied it without pre- prejudice. He never, he never showed up to any of the meetings. Yeah, right. So, so yeah, he showed up to one at least. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Maybe right. pleading yeah. poverty, as I recall. Yeah, and, and I don't know if it was pleading poverty so much as this is his livelihood. Yeah. 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 Well, maybe I'm confusing. The he, two didn't have, he didn't have the money. Yeah. Maybe yeah. It was okay. Anyway. Uh, if if he gets his wetland flag staked, I'm uh, I'll you know I'll be in touch and with Alan and we'll decide if his public hearings can be done in July. I don't have a problem waiting to to August for this one to make sure that it's right or at least complete. Yeah. All right, Katie. Did you have another question? Yeah. Are we going to be communicating with him so that he understands the process? Uh, I am going to attempt, uh, make a valiant attempt to, to do so. Um, what I have to do, I think, to make sure that he understands is actually sit down and talk with him. Um, he uh, does not respond to most emails. Um, and, you know, f- as far as the, uh, um, the uh, uh, you know, letters, um, you know, we send a letter, a notice of violation, all of that stuff. I'm not sure that he, he even reads them. Mm. Okay. And so, right yes. Um, attorney, and, it, and this is under a court order to submit this plan, right? Yeah, it was part of the original Wetlands uh, Commission cease and desist order was you, they got a permit in 2019 to do a little bit of work around the house, and he exploded it. So we gave him a cease and desist order. Cease and desist order says you got to come back with these new applications for the work that you're doing, and that's where it that's where it broke down. So, it, but did he submit these plans because the court ordered it? it? No, he submitted the 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 new application and the fees because okay. it was part of because it was part of uh, what he needs to do to get approval or attempt to get approval and permits for the work that he's doing out there. Isn't there a lawsuit against him? There was, yes. I believe that my understanding is, is that the lawsuit, there was one from planning and zoning for, for planning violations. And there was one from this commission for wetland violations and both were, were uh, uh, adjudicated, I think is the right word. Stipulated agreements, I believe that he agreed to. And, and I, there's, there's, my, 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 my guess is he's, he owes a ton of money to the courts, he, I don't, which I don't think he realized it. I think that every day he's in violation. The, the, he's, correct me if I'm wrong, Peter, but there, there, my, my understanding is that there was a, a daily uh, fee 
schedule. I mean, uh, the, that if that he had, that he was liable for, which he's yeah, so, been yeah, racking up some, uh, right. meters running. I don't know. I don't know the the ins and outs, the individual details of that. Um, and I think um, uh, part of it had part of it may be triggered to his submittal of these applications. That may I'm hoping that's that's the uh, the the cutoff date. You know, if he's for if he's owed so much uh, per day or per week when he's in violation, once he submits his permit applications, if this commission takes 65 days to to hear the thing, I don't think you should be penalized for for not having well, his permits he, he, for 65 days. We're going to have to cut. Yeah, if if he's been racking up daily fees, I don't think. Any amount, he has any any of that money to pay the whole fee, so we're going to have to come up with some kind of agreement at some point uh, to, to, to say what's a fair fair assessment. I mean, a fair assessment yeah. is is to hit him with everything we got because he has been ignoring us. But well, right, he's that, gonna, that's not a reasonable. Uh, that's not going to happen. I don't think. Yeah, I think he he will he will likely plead COVID. Yeah. Well, I don't think you should <laughs> cut, I don't think you should cut the penalties until he's all done. Well, anyway, we probably shouldn't be talking about legal strategies in open session anyway. Yeah. But, <laughs> well, right. you know, when it when the time comes for that, I think we can, you know, at some point go into executive session with our town attorney and see what our options are. But I, I don't think really the, the legal strategies, we should get too far into it. I agree. Okay. Okay. So those you'll take care of those, uh, Peter? And, uh, yes, I will be following up with those. Moving on to new applications, none, wetlands agent permits. Uh, yep. Two of them. Took care I've of them. got, yeah, the owners at Nine Alfred Circle uh, uh, are putting in an in-ground pool and they're within 100 feet of the wetlands. So they came in and I approved a, uh, um, a wetlands agent permit for that one. Uh, number two is the 600 apartments. They're doing some site work uh, in association with their pool house improvements. Um, I don't know if anybody's been in the, in the way back at the 600 apartments, but they have a swimming pool and a pretty nice uh, clubhouse uh, in the back in south of the building is right down on the river. You can spit your watermelon seeds out the window into the river. It's that nice close. island back there too. Yeah, this is uh, I think downstream of the island, but yeah, uh, yeah. the it's it's Washbrook, and uh, they have some you know they're doing some excavation. They're going to pave a slightly bigger turnaround, and they're going to do some stormwater, uh, storm drainage improvements. They have a uh, pipe that's come off the head wall, uh, and they're going to be doing that. Uh, as part of their project and uh, except for the little bit of work at the at the head wall uh, which is at the edge of the stream uh, all their work is in the upland review area so I approved a wellands agent permit for that one too um, it's not on the list here but uh, I also recently approved the wetlands agent permit for the Simsbury to uh, Bloomfield or the Bloomfield Simsbury link of the multi uh, multi-use trail. Um, so uh, it's a state project. I don't know if they're going to start it this year, but they were, we were at, uh, you know, I was looking at 80% complete plans and the next set of plans is, is construction, I believe. And uh, they're going to create a trail on the side of route 189. Uh, walking and uh, running trail, similar to the one that's on the, uh, the Griffin line rail now <clears throat> that has uh, the only thing that's gonna be different for this one is it's gonna be parallel to the highway and run right along the, the left-hand side as you're going towards Terrafil. Uh, it's in a rock cut there. So they're gonna be pushing uh, over the travel lanes and building this trail uh, on the I guess that's the west side, left side going northbound, and it'll it'll connect to the uh, to Terrafield Center from the present end of the Bloomfield uh, Trail, 
um, which is north of Terra Phil Road. I don't know if you guys have had a chance to use those trails at all, but they're very, very popular. A lot of people out there walking. I prefer to drive to downtown Terra. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, it's, you know, that, that's a long, you know, that it is yeah, that's that, a, that is a mile a, and a half or so. Right. There's some nice, more. nice cliff faces along there too. Yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm thinking that in, in years where we get, a lot of free and freeze and thaws the, those cliffs have ice yep. build up on them so yep. hopefully it won't it won't be icicles falling on the tra on the trail mm. but that was the other one that i that i didn't put down here uh, ongoing projects ongoing <laughs> projects the uh apartments at 711 here 713 rather not 711 across from the town hall, 713 Bluefield Avenue are, are moving right along. They poured their concrete floor today. So I guess they had a six hour concrete pour planned. Where started at 6, 6 a.m. and it took them six hours to, to finish. Where yeah. was this, Peter? It's right across from the town hall. hall on Bluefield Avenue, uh, oh, the okay. Seven, 713 Bluefield Avenue. Not phase two or phase three. Oh, it, it is phase, phase, phase three. Oh, three. It's three actually. Technically, it's phase three, but it is naturally phase two. It's a yeah. second phase, but it was labeled phase three on the plans. Originally, yeah. And yeah, they haven't done phase two yet. No. Phase two is the other side of Jerome Avenue. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Um, the uh, the other project is is our is our bugaboo, uh, Anthony's way. Uh, he's got yeah. one one CO to go and a whole lot of infrastructure to complete on that project. I um, saw a sign that he has five lots left. Is that true? Yeah, that sign's been up for six months now or so. So is that what he has left? He's oh. got one. No, he has none. None that aren't built on. Oh. He's got COs for 11 out of 12 houses. Okay. That's what I thought. I didn't understand yeah. the sign. Yeah. yeah, they just didn't change the sign. Okay. So uh, is he aware of what needs to be done before he gets the final CO on the house? Yes. We're working with him. Uh, Jose and I and, and the uh, building department are working with him. Yeah, I, I left a call. We're, we're trying to meet with him on Friday morning with all the different people uh, I left a message on his phone. He didn't return my call this afternoon. But you got we had, we had, we had an in-house meeting at 11 this morning and, and, and went over everything. And then uh, as, af, right after that, I, I gave him a call and tried to schedule something for Friday or Thursday. And see, you got to nail him at Isaac's at 9.15. All right. <laughs> well, we can get him right after I, Isaac's. There you go. <laughs> well, <laughs> we'll send Deshant down for bagels and there you go. That's right. Have, have him bring AJ back to the office. Really. Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, there's um, the the new parking lot for Home Goods is is uh, uh, well underway on Blue Hills Avenue. Um, you may have seen that behind the pool company. Um, they've got uh, most of their, um, you know, looks like they've got most of their earthwork done. Uh, and they've got to build a whole bunch of underground stormwater systems there. And then they're going to be paving, uh, you know, this year for sure. Um, at the M&M trucking site on, on Phoenix Crossing, they're, they're uh, uh, pretty much done over there. And I, I believe they're going to be asking for a CO uh, for that building and that project uh, soon. Um, they, you guys might remember this one was um, a two-part project. One side had, excuse me, one side had the uh, building and some parking, and then around the corner there was a another uh, bunch of parking spaces for trailers. So they're they're working on both of those. The pavements in, the landscaping's in. Uh, they didn't get the seating done, but they they've got. 99% uh, of everything else done. So I think they're going to be getting a CO shortly. Um, on, on Privilege Road, they're still building duplexes. Um, they recently got reapproved wetlands and planning 
And I think they're going to try to finish that project up in 2022. That's my understanding. Um, but they're they're moving, uh, you know, they're building a lot of a lot of duplexes out there. Um, and that's the one where the developers decided not to sell the duplexes, but to rent them. Um, the other, uh, you know, the other projects that are in town uh, still hanging on is 470 Cottage Grove Road, the, the uh, um, apartment building across from the Dunkin' Donuts. And uh, they also have, uh, you know, are getting close to being finished, but I don't know where they are with the inside of the building or the site work or any of that. Um, I thought they would be done, you know, by, by this time last year. Yeah, so they're going real slow. Um, yeah. At uh, um, 65 Jolly Drive, the apartments at the end of Jolly Drive are also well underway. Um, they've got uh, their clearing done and their erosion controls up and they're working on getting an approval for their retaining wall. Um, they've got a pretty long retaining wall against the backside. And at one point it is either 15 or 17 feet in height which is a pretty high retaining wall. And so uh, that retaining wall design has to be submitted by a PE and reviewed by our engineering department. And uh, our new, um, our new uh, deputy town engineer, whose name is Sarah Coates. Uh, his name? Sarah Coates. You said his name. Did I? Oh, I beg your pardon, her name. Uh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> thank you for for bringing that up to me. Oh, well, you never know now this. That's true too. <laughs> ah, okay. Uh, anyway, her experience is with geotechnical engineering. Oh, so, cool. so she's been reviewing that and they've been going back and forth a little bit, um, but they're going to be uh, bringing in um, many thousand cubic yards of, of uh, structural fill to bring that site up to the level where they're going to build the I think it's three-story apartment building back there. So things are things are jumping in Bloomfield during this construction season. Uh, I've I've gotten a few um, uh, inquiries about two Maple Avenue. You guys might remember a couple of months ago there was a map amendment and an approval for two duplexes. Well, they tore down the house. Yes, they yeah they tore down the house um, a few years, years ago. <laughs> wasn't after the meeting. And the, uh, the, uh, the people that have been asking me about it have been asking whether they could put condos there, whether it could be more than the number of bedrooms that they said it was gonna be and, and all of this stuff. And I said, for wetlands, it doesn't matter. The number of bedrooms doesn't come into, come into play, you know? Um, but the applicant for those, for that project uh, made a point to say that they were, they were um, a uh, uh, respected and well-known uh, property management company and that they would keep the place up. It wasn't part of any kind of approval, but we did ask for a maintenance schedule to be added to the plan. Um, but if they don't build it, I think his name was Weinstein, Max Weinstein was mm -hmm. the permittee. If they don't build it or if they want to transfer the the permit uh they're going to have to make that request and um i'll let you know if that happens so that property is back up for sale is it not yeah, i believe exactly. it is yeah because wow. yeah because i understand they're asking about like four times what they bought it for i don't know which is you know their their prerogative they don't want to build after going through all that rigmarole with us market's yeah. the market Kevin, do you want to do something? Kevin uh, Wilcox, do you want to do something about that tree? No. Okay. Is some, I mean, what, what can be done? It's. I don't know. Is there some organization that can protect it or? Probably not. All right. uh, it's, it's just a, like a gentleman's thing that you go out, you measure the tree and put it on a list of notable trees within the state. It's not like a historical. But, but you, ha you have noticed the tree, though. Right. What kind of tree is it? It's a European beech that is called either tricolor or rosio marginata. And really? it's a beautiful purple 
foliage plant, but it does have two tones to the foliage. Mm. It's one of the largest I've ever seen. Well, is there a tree, tree trust? In the it's, area? it's done through the or, uh, Con College. They're the ones who maintain the list and send out people to measure. Okay. Okay, uh, minutes, approval of minutes. Oh, yeah. Let me get my copy, hold on. I'm going to have to bring them up separately and go through it with you. I don't have a paper copy handy. Um, let's see. I can email you these items. You can do that. I've got my Word document up here. If you want to go through, we can discuss them. And okay. I could do it that way. You ready? Yep. This is uh, April 19th, right? Correct. Okay. Page three. Wow, that's good. I made it through two whole pages. <laughs> no, Page they're three. Great. They're great. Um, one, two, three, fourth paragraph beginning mm -hmm. proposing. They are proposing. Yep. That the stormwater runoff from the parking lots flow. I think two. it's two, the bioretention areas. It's really small. Um, and then page four. First okay. paragraph. Second sentence, I think relocated in the mid 1900s. Oh yeah. That looks like auto correct there. And then under public questions, the last paragraph, Ms. Gail Riley of- Oh Riley yeah. Address. I, I can answer that if you'd like. You know her address? Yes, one, she's Mrs. Because I think that Mike would would appreciate everybody knowing that he that they are married, okay, uh, and they are on Eight Maple Avenue. Cool. Thank you. Sure. And then under commission questions, second paragraph, second to the last sentence. I think it's supposed to be existing woods versus exiting. Yeah, that's 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 not autocorrect. That's me missing the S key. Oh, no worries. <laughs> yeah, and that's and then, not one that spell check catches. Go ahead. And then the last one is on page five uh, in the bolded section just above prior to the issuance of the wetland permit. The second to the last sentence, utility services from under the rain gardens, or is it? Relocate of utility services. It is indeed. Okie doke, that's all I have. For this is, okay. Yeah, nothing substantive. Well, but we got the address. I would have been able to find well, that, it, but I would have had to look it up. So thank you, Kevin mm -hmm. Wilcox, that was good. All right, so I will maybe plot these corrections if you guys are happy with it, but I think there should be an actual vote on them. And so move. Second. Second. Second by Kevin Wilcox. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Staying unanimous. Uh, any other business? Yes. Um, I have been working on a revision to our official wetlands map. The last one was approved in July of 2014. Uh, and there's been about two dozen, maybe a few more, uh, wetland map amendments uh, since that map was, was created. Um, in, I think, 2020, um, we had a discussion uh, about the map and there was, there was uh, um, a general consensus for the, uh, from the commission that we do a town-wide map 
that can be filed with the town clerk, uh, followed up by the detailed uh, 200 scale maps um, uh, that would not be the official map, but would be easier to, to update. Um, and a town-wide map will also be easier for people to look at online. <clears throat> so I've already made the map, uh, a draft of the map, and the, um, the scan, the, the PDF scan of the map is 35 megabytes. So it's not easy to send by email, but I think people could bring it up on the town webpage. So um, my, uh, my thoughts on this was that we can have, uh, um, we can uh, talk about it and possibly schedule a public hearing in uh, not before August, uh, in August in, or September, because um, we have to give, I believe we have to give the DEP 35 days notice or something like that for what, for regulations and for the official map. So once the commission or once I'm happy with the map and I can present it to the commission or, or tell them that, you know, I'm ready to, to uh, move forward with it, then I think it can be posted um, and the public hearing can be scheduled probably two months after that. So uh, one of my goals this summer is to try to get all of the recent wetland map amendments into the GIS and plot this new overall map. Alan saw the draft on the wall here at the town hall um, uh, last week, I think. And there, you know, I still have some work to do on, on the actual map. Um, and, you know, there's like any map, any drawing like that, you guys are going to see it and have some suggestions or um, additions that you want. And when we come to a consensus of the information that we want on the map and, and how it's presented, then we can go forward to adopt a new, uh, a new official map. Um, we have new, new up-to-date information for the map. Uh, we will have, um, I think there are 2015 uh, um, contours, in, uh, not on the ov overall map, but on the, on the detailed maps, contours and aerial photos um, from 2020. So we have some pretty up-to-date information on that. But the first step is to do the, to do the town-wide overall map. And since the town hall is opening up again, next time anybody's by, you want to stop in and see it. It's on the wall inside our door. Um, and it's, uh, you know, it's a, it's a thousand scale map and that fits the whole town pretty snugly. You know? So what I've got on the map now are the wetlands, the watercourses, uh, property lines, and the main buildings. Um, and also the names of the streets. So any more detailed information like that is gonna really clutter up this overall map. But the amount of information we can, we can do to take you know, uh, at a 200 scale is, is, is gonna be better. Um, and there'll be more information on those sheets. But that's, that's where we're at with that. Um, I think I have two uh, map amendments that are not that have been approved that aren't in in the data that I have. If these two that we talked about tonight come through next month or before we're ready to do a new map, then we'll include them as well. Hey, um, quick, Peter, it's Kevin. Um, I think there was a bill that was just passed in the legislation about, I believe it was towns and or municipalities uh, updating their GIS database. Did you come across that legislation yet? No, I have not. What, what, in what respect with their database? I for, I for, I forgot what sp the specific details were for the, um, for that bill. But if you can maybe have someone check it out, maybe you're Jose. I just want to make sure that we don't have to present anything else, or if there's not something else we need to put in there, or even if it applies to us. I just remember scanning it, some of the bills that were approved, and there was a GIS bill, but I wasn't sure if it was for all towns or if it, we're already doing it, then it's for the towns that haven't done it yet, maintaining okay. that GIS database. But just verify that quickly before we miss something on that too, just to make sure we don't have to do it again. 
Okay, will do. Uh, yeah. I have I have heard that uh, the legislature has extended approvals for certain permits for an ungodly amount of time. Uh, yeah. And I haven't got the details on that either, but there may be a certain segment of permits that were approved in the last. Yeah, I read through. I read through it. It looks like all permits, including planning and zoning, and all land use permits are going for from five year approvals to nine year, nine years approvals, with uh, extensions up to fourteen years. I don't know why they chose nine instead of ten and fifteen, but it's nine and fourteen. Uh, there must be some rhyme and reason. But I, I took a quick look through that bill because it kind of snuck. Uh, yeah, the, 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 the 2008 yeah. bill was the same way. They granted an initial duration extension of five years, of uh, four years, pardon me. So initial is five, you get four years extension from the, from the state legislature, and then it can be approved again for another yeah. five years, and that's your 14. But this isn't even an extension. This would make every single one be nine years expiration date. Yeah. And then and then you can extend that out one one five year period. So that's, that's uh, exactly. uh, we're going to have to take a good look at everything that got passed because I suspect we'll have to change our regulations to, to match what the state statutes say. Yeah. And the Privilege Road uh, Garden Home subdivision just went through that. They got nine years extend an extension for the initial duration and then they came in and got five more years and that wasn't enough time so they had to come back around yeah again uh, there's a bunch of stuff at least on the zoning side there's there was that uh, affordable housing kind of uh, where, where you're supposed to have two families as of right in certain zones which we do allow uh, uh, i mean that's how privilege drive got built it's basically a single family subdivision that the owners had enough land on each lot to basically put up two families and they didn't have to come back to planning and zoning or anything because our regs allowed it as of right. So I think we're in pretty good shape. There might be some tweaks we have to make, uh, but I have to, again, there's, there was a lot of legislation passed and it's going to, I'm going to wait for CCM and other people to really pour over it and, uh, and maybe give us uh, some guidance. Some, some point, some <laughs> pointers. And a quick question, Peter. On the um on the on the amendments, right? When they submit the amendments once approved, do we do that in house where we convert these CAD files into shape files that we upload into the GIS file? Who creates that? Does the town do that, or do the applicants who are supposed to submit a CAD file for the amended? The the applicants submit a CAD file, and we incorporate it into our in house GIS. Every so often, okay. that data goes out to the assessor's GIS, and that hasn't been updated in a while. No, that, that, that what's ever online is, is awful. Right. I can't even get the street names right. up there. So, Why can, we, can, can we have a live file? How hard is it to have a live updated? So when there's an amendment, we basically, within a month, it becomes a live active GIS database with the amendments on there. Well, uh, we're going over as part as part of our reval. We're updating a bunch of stuff. Uh, most most importantly, we're updating our parcel mapping, which was not very accurate. So um, that's almost done, and I think we're going to have an internal GIS, which has a lot more capability than the um, stuff that we put out to the to the public. But it, you know, obviously, there'll be improvements to the to the public GIS also. So we're we're still waiting for the for the work to be finished on that, uh, and I think we were we've had a, at least one session with the uh, with the vi vision the company that's doing it to sort of tell us what's what's coming down the pike. So uh, I can't wait. Yeah, yeah. How soon? That's the that's the million dollar question, and uh, it's been dragging for over a year. I thought it was going to get done last year. Well, and now, now we're now we don't have an assessor, so I don't know what how, what that does to the time frame. Uh, it 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 may be prudent to wait for that if it's not going to be another whole year to do a townwide wetland map. Yeah. You know? or sure. uh, you know the other thing is that the uh, uh, um, the commission will be able to update uh, the new map uh, with a public hearing 
uh, on a more regular basis. Right now, it's difficult to update the official map on a regular basis because it's 66 sheets. So you have to redo all 66 sheets. At a, a town-wide map, it's one sheet. It's a big sheet, but it's one. And it can be updated and at a, at a public hearing, you know, maybe we need to do uh, uh, um, an annual, here's the new map or kind of every other year or three years, like we do the regulations, you know, things no, change. No, I, so I like the idea of having the one big map. So every amendment that we made, it gets updated and that's the live map, not 10 years later, then we're making this general update with all these pieces being fixed. If yeah. we have the most recent one, we amend it and we get updated and it's a live one pager that has every single thing updated as of the last meeting. I will talk with our GIS specialist about that and see how we could do that. It will be, I think, have to be a separate map like on the Wetlands Commission website. Not yeah, our, our online GIS, then, the, yeah, we have to submit it to Neo Geo. They have to incorporate it into the we have a third party provider that does our online GIS. I don't know if any, any of you guys work with, uh, with, with um, you know, second or third party uh, programs like that, but it's sometimes difficult to get it updated, you know, even on a regular, uh, irregular basis. If it's not built into the contract, then the contract comes to the end, and then you have to, you know, take take the steps that need to be done. Right now, it's it's bad information. I think the property names and stuff are correct. But just today, I was looking at a house for a lot. Somebody came in on Wesleyan Terrace, the Wesleyan Terrace uh, subdivision. And um, our internal GIS say that there's a half an acre of land. Uh, and it's on the cul-de-sac. And it's in the half acre or the 30,000 square foot zone, I guess. Uh, but the GIS, uh, assessor's GIS said it had 0.22 acres. So maybe they've been paying taxes on 0.22 acres. I don't know. Uh, there's a lot of those. Yeah. Sometimes you draw a polygon on there and you, you say, well, wow, this is way off. Not even that's close. Exactly, that's exactly. Not even, not even close in some, in some of the larger verses. Yeah. All right. So I like the idea of a live map, Kevin, and I'll try to see if I can work something with the GIS specialist to, to, to make that happen. All right. Thank so, you. Nothing else? Yeah, just one more thing, if I may. Uh, I completely forgot about this until I sat down for the webinar. Uh, so forgive me if my thoughts are a little scattered. Sometime, I think it was early... May, there was a town sponsored tour of Farmington River Park. And the people who organized it asked me if I would be one of their leaders of this tour. And I have to admit, it was the first time I'd ever been there. Uh, Peter, can you tell me if there are vernal pools on that property? Uh, I, I don't believe there are. Um, but there, there may be vernal pools there that, that I'm not aware of. Um, the property was, oh, geez, I used to know who was the uh, original owner of that property, but um, there was, there is a house and there were a couple of cabins out there. I don't know if there's still cabins, but there's definitely a house still out there. And it was deeded to the town or given to the town after the passing of the of the property owner, but there's lots of water courses and little uh, ponds. Some of them are man-made, some of them are made because they built a, a little bridge across the stream. Um, they have uh, um, areas that are certainly seasonally flooded, but I don't know if there's any vernal pools out there. The, the reason why I ask is some of the other people who, uh, Unfortunately, I don't know names unless you're a plant. And uh, people kept telling me that some of the pools were vernal pools. And I, I'm not going to verify it. I, I don't know the species of animals mm -hmm. that you would have to identify. However, uh, 
there, there has been some clearing or removal of trees that had come down in a storm uh, between the house and the river. That's definitely within, uh, say, 500 feet or less, even 100 mm -hmm. feet of where some of these pools are. So I don't know who would have to identify if those are actually vernal pools. I mean, who, who's, who's doing the work in there? And the, uh, um, the uh, recreation, uh, leisure services is, is creating a, a canoe or, or boat launch, yeah. you know, uh, <laughs> canoe right. access, uh, kayak access to the, to, to the river in that, in that area. Um, when I spoke last to Dave uh, from Leisure Services, he said that they were going to be, um, he didn't think they had to cut any trees, but maybe there were trees down from the, the storm fall. And in uh, what I told them was that if you're, if you're doing work in there that, that chews up the ground. And which might they really did. Yeah, which she said they weren't going to do, of course. So um, there are a lot of recreational exemptions to the Wetlands Act, too. They can, okay. can do a lot of stuff. Um, however, one of the things you can, you can see, you can eliminate a pool from being a vernal pool if it has a stream in or out. Mm -hmm. Vernal pools are isolated. Okay. So if it has a stream in and a stream out, fish can get up there and they might eat the frog eggs and the salamander eggs and stuff like that. So typically vernal pools are not, you know, connected to another body of water. Uh, they might be in the wetlands connected, but they're, they're uh, you know, they, they should not have a connection to another body of water. Okay. So that's a good way to, to just say, you know, is it a vernal pool? If there's a stream coming in or one going out, then it's not a vernal pool. Otherwise, it's uh, someone who can identify the egg sacs and the fingernail clams and uh, stuff like that that are, you know, that you see in in April and May. They're gone already. Now it's too late. You can't you can't see them. Okay, so there is a window of opportunity for identifying a vernal pool, and yes. that's during the season that it's wet. Right, and that's the season when the uh, the eggs are laid and and the you know the the little ones hatch, uh, and then the pool dries up and they go up into the into the uplands and hide okay. under the leaves. Okay, all right, thank Anything you. Else? Is there a motion to adjourn. So moved. Move. Second. Seconded by Barry. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Abstain. It's unanimous. Uh, we'll see you all next month, I guess, in person. Yeah. Did you guys, uh, can we stop the?